I join my colleagues in celebrating a major and long overdue achievement allowing the American people to have the benefit of a government that will stand up to negotiate prices and try its best to make the prescription medications that they need for themselves and the people they love to be affordable. You know, what is a greater responsibility that a government has to its citizens to help create a health care system that is accessible and is affordable? Why is it that in this country, the citizens that we all represent are getting hammered on the cost of medications that if they just go across the border to Canada, they can get it one-tenth, one-fifth of the price. Why is it? It is because until this day, we have been the only government that has not been willing to use price negotiation to protect consumers from price gouging by big pharma. And it's really brutal. I mean, every one of us, I talked to Vermonters, Senator Stabenow was talking about Michiganders, Senator Whitehouse was talking about the folks in Rhode Island, by the way, some of whom are Republicans, some of whom are Democrats, some of whom are independents, many of whom don't even bother to pay much attention to the political process. But when they have to get access to that medication, that is really essential to their well-being. They can't afford it. We are paying, they are paying, all our citizens, in many cases, two and a half times on average, what folks across the border in Canada or in Europe are paying for the same medication. And, you know, it's terrific when Big Pharma, through their research, comes up with medications that can extend our life. But if they charge so much that we can't afford it, what does that do? And time in after time, we have seen folks make these horrible decisions about cutting back on their medication at the threat to their own life and safety because they literally can't afford it. Now, the pharmaceutical industry, let's give them credit. They've created life-saving drugs. That's a tremendous thing but they can't use the fact that they're doing something good to jack up prices to make it unaffordable just for self-enrichment. You know, we have done, we as a government, have done an enormous amount to help pharma with the innovation side. And they're suggesting that this legislation is gonna interfere with that capacity. Is it true? No, think about what we've done. We, the government, taxpayers, number one, the intellectual property is protected. So for that period of time, oftentimes well over a decade, they can charge whatever they want to charge and they have the exclusive right to have that, mar that, that drug on the market. And they charge a lot. Number two, we've created an employer-sponsored healthcare system where we have employers in all of our states where it's really important to that employer to provide good quality health care to its employees. And they have to pay whatever the premiums are that are oftentimes inflated as a result of us having the highest prescription drug prices in the world. Third, we have a Medicare and Medicaid program, which is guaranteed purchasing pool to buy the products that they create. So pharma has protection on its profits with an exclusive period. It has government that's standing behind the right of citizens to have access to health care through Medicare, and particularly Medicaid, and also employer-sponsored health care. And then what you see is pharmaceutical industry going beyond the patent rights that it has for that market exclusivity and do the things that Senator Klobuchar was talking about, where they try to extend the life of the patent well beyond what that, that limited period was supposed to be. And then, by the way, Wall Street gets in the game here because what many of the companies have claimed is research is a corporate buyout. Company A buys company B that has a patent on a popular and necessary drug. They pay billions for it. And then to pay for the purchase price, they inflate the cost of that prescription drug. And they can do it. They get away with it. 
So, you know, Senator Hickenlooper asked the question, why is the outrage <laughs> not about that we let it go on for so long? So pharma's going to do fine and keep doing what they're going to be doing. They're going to have the patent exclusivity. They're going to have a government in a Senate with Republicans and Democrats wanting maintaining the Medicare program so that the folks are, who are going to need prescription drugs are going to be able to get them. They're going to do fine. But finally, we have price negotiation so that, in effect, if you or I are going to the pharmacy to buy aspirin and we buy 100 because the per unit cost is a lot less, we get to pay wholesale when we're, uh, we, get, we get to buy, decide about bargaining by what we purchase, a big amount or a little amount. Medicare should be able to do the same thing. So this is so overdue and so beneficial to everybody that we all represent, regardless of politically whose side they're on. This is about a shared need that our society has for access to prescription medication. And of course, Senator uh, and Mr., uh, Mr. President, we all appreciate the focus that you put on insulin. I mean, if there isn't a more shocking example of a ripoff, this drug has been around for decades. There's no new innovation, but what there is, is pricing power. So that those companies that had the ability to set the price, to raise the price, and to do it again, kept going up and up and up, even though there was not any additional intellectual breakthroughs with the actual core of what insulin is. You know, we in this country know that working Americans are struggling to pay their bills. Things are expensive, and it's not just inflation. Things are expensive in many cases because there's real corporate power and they can set the price they want. Nowhere do they do that with more abuse of consistency than in pharmaceutical uh, prescriptions. And we can decide as a Senate that we're gonna find ways to make things affordable by stopping the ripoff, having the capacity for Medicare to negotiate prices is a major breakthrough. It's no small thing. It's the beginning, it's not the end of our efforts. And I thank all of my colleagues uh, for working together to help all of our constituents, regardless of who they voted for, because the thing they all have in common is they wanna protect especially the people that they love. And the arguments from pharma, what I find so alarming, is that what they prey upon is the love that people in America have for their families. Because if you're a mom or you're a dad and you've got a son or a daughter who needs a prescription drug and you can't afford it, you'll take out a second mortgage or you'll sell the house or you'll get rid of your retirement account. You'll do whatever it takes to save the person you care about. And pharma, with their pushback, saying this is going to threaten innovation, is not, it's preying on those fears that all of us have about what will happen if we don't do everything we can to help the person that we love. And you know what? It's not about that for pharma. They're doing pretty well. Those salaries are astonishing. Those corporate buybacks are very rich. So. I'm proud to be with my colleagues here to stand up for the right that our citizens have affordably, confidently, securely to be able to have, when they need it, access to the prescription medication that's going to extend their life and save their loved ones. I yield back.